Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna do a Q&A video. I love doing these. I love finding out what you guys wanna know about us. So print out our questions that we got. Um, I'm not gonna say people's name except for people who I know are on YouTube because like, you know. So the first question that I got is, why do you choose the poodle cut that you do? Farabee has had this haircut, similar style since about maybe July of 2020. Um, before that, we did a Miami cut and then we did a modified continental cut and then we did, I don't know the real name of it, but it's the Georgette Disney Poodle. Um, and then I just got tired of brushing her for 45 minutes twice a day, so I shaved it all off. Um, her current hairstyle takes about 15 minutes to do, so her top knot has never been cut, so there's just a lot of length here. I'll insert a picture of that because that's another question that we get is how long is Furby's hair, like if we didn't band it up. Um, so I'll insert a picture for you guys, but yeah, basically at this point, as you guys can see, I guess her hair is just really long on top. Her top knot's never been cut and her tail has never been cut, but everything else just gets shaved and just kind of do what's easy for us. Um, what was the hardest task for her to learn? Tasks all have come really easy to her and so has most everything really, honestly. Most of her tricks and tasks have come easy to her. The hardest thing she's had to learn at all or that we've learned at all. Pods were kind of difficult, like getting all four feet on independently, which is not a task, but that's the hardest thing. And then orbit for her to actually get it, you know, that was pretty difficult for her. Ring toss was hard too, but those are not tasks. Those are just, you know, fun things. So none of the tasks were really hard though. She's quick to pick up on stuff, so. Will you do a gear wall or training room tour? I will do an updated gear haul, um, and then I'll actually show you where we store everything too. I'm not gonna put that in this video because it would take too long, but I will do that. And training room tour, um, I will put in a picture of our living room. That's where we train. So it's actually our living room. Um, so if you look up here, you see that's our living room. And then over here is our kitchen. And then right here is the area we use for training. So this is what you guys usually see. It's just kind of like this area right here. This little rug thing. That's actually a, I guess it's a play mat for kids, um, but we got two of them and connected them together. So it's six by 12. So it makes a really nice big area for her to run and play on and I don't have to worry that she's gonna get hurt jumping around. And it's basically right in front of our front door. So this is what you see right when you walk in the house. Is when did you start service dog training? We have been training like since she came home basically, but service dog stuff, I think she naturally like realized something was going on with me. She was maybe four months old. She realized something was going on with me. I was having a pretty bad panic attack and she realized something was up. And so she just on her own wanted to help me with that. And I don't know that I wanna say that's me starting training her on that because you know, I didn't really tell her to do anything for that. Her first task, I don't know, she's probably six, seven months old when we started task training and stuff. Um, and then as far as public access, I'm not really sure what service dog training part you're asking about. So as far as like public access and stuff, we started um, pet friendly stores pretty much as soon as she came home. I would take her, you know, carry her when she was little, put her in a stroller, whatever. Non-pet friendly, we didn't start till she was 10 and a half, 11 months old. We did it once, it was March 8th of 2020. And then literally like two days later, everything got shut down. So then the next time we got to go was, I guess, June. What made you want to use the word buttons? I don't really remember what I saw. I saw somebody's dog using word buttons and they were using like one button at a time. That's why I did the sentences on a button because I was like, you know, how, I didn't see the, the value in her being able to communicate in that way um, and actually put her thoughts out. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, this dog's asking to go outside or whatever, but they're having to press like their name and then one and then two and then go and then outside. And I was just thinking, that's a lot. <laughs> that's like a lot of time to get a sentence out. And the way that the person that I saw had their button set up too, it wasn't just like, where the dog could just stand in one place and press them all. Like they had to like walk around this whole thing. And, and I was thinking, you know, that's a cool idea, but I'm gonna simplify it. And that's why I did the sentences on the buttons. And then now here we are breaking them down into to words, like single words again, but I don't know who that was. 
don't, I really don't know who it was. I saw it maybe, it had to be last March because we got the buttons in the end of March, beginning of April. So it had to be about a year ago that I saw it, but I don't know who it was. I wasn't gonna use their method, so I didn't like follow them, you know, to like learn how they were doing it. So another question we got is what made you choose a standard poodle? I kept being breed matched to the standard poodle. Um, I still don't really feel like I chose a standard poodle. I mean, I know I have one. And now I know I went there to get one. <laughs> um, but it was just so quick and it was, I had not even thought about having a poodle at all, ever that I can think of. I don't know that I knew the standard poodle was a dog um, until like four days before I got therapy or maybe five days before I got therapy. So yeah, it, it really was, I'm gonna call it divine intervention or some type of magnetic force that I didn't know that we needed to be together. But Fairby and I were cosmically matched. That sounds crazy, <laughs> but we were. We were somehow put together. It wasn't a snare poodle thing for me. It was just something drew me to Fairby. And I didn't know it was Fairby that I was getting. Stars aligned, things were done cosmically that I don't even know how it happened and I have her. So that's how I got a snare poodle. But I'll link our story of how I actually met her for you in case you're interested because it goes into like, you know, the long, long-winded story of it. But that's, um, Basically, the short answer is I don't, I didn't necessarily choose a standard poodle. I didn't even know you were a fan, huh? No. We didn't even know. We didn't know. She didn't know I was a thing either, so. All right, any hard task or a major goal you want to achieve this year with your service dog? Um, oh, and this is from the Fluffy Poodle. If you haven't watched the Fluffy Poodle, check out their channel. They have a really good service dog channel. They do a lot of training and, and fun things. Hard tasks or major goals. Um, we don't have any tasks we're necessarily working on right now. I would say that our major goal right now is to get her championship trick title and then to work our way back through the other levels of tricks and master all of the tricks for each one of those because you only have to have like 15 out of each one to get the title, but there's probably a list of like 30 or 40 per level that you can pick from and you can be like a master of those. So first goal is for her to get her championship title, it's a championship, champion trick dog, whatever it's called, champion trick dog title, and then we're gonna work our way back through things. But those aren't tasks or anything service dog related, but yeah, yeah. What are your three top commands you use most in your three- So part of my video did something weird. So one of the questions that I missed was, what are your three most used commands? And I would say the thing that we use the very most, um, I tell Farabee to watch my six a whole lot. And then we also use with me, which is our, our word for heal. That's also the word we use for come. I don't know if that's weird or not, but it means the same thing. If I tell her with me, it means I want her by my side. So those two are the ones we use the very most. And then Farabee's most used task besides watch my six is definitely behavior interruption because I do stuff and she has to help me. So those are our three most used tasks and um, I guess commands, behaviors, whatever. I don't really use the word command much though, which I know, by the way, Fluffy Poodle's the one who asked this. And I know that you treat your dog like the same way that I do mine. Like you don't, you know, like command Fluffy <laughs> to go do stuff. Um, so whenever I write it, I'm like, what do I think, of, like what are commands? Like it kind of, I don't know. It took me a minute to even think about how would answer that. So those are the three things we use the very most. And then the three things we use the very least, um, as far as task, the very least used task that we have is definitely crowd control because we're never in a crowd. Like, I don't think I've been in a crowd probably since like 20 years ago. Not really, maybe like 10 years ago. It's been a long time. I don't go to crowded places. So that, and then as far as our least used like commands, we'll call it lay is probably one we don't use a lot. I feel like we use everything else pretty like steady and constant. So I hope that answers that question. So another question I got as I was filming and I didn't see it was, is your dog owner trained or is she trained through a program? And no, she's completely owner trained. I had gone into a lot of detail about that on one of my other Q and A's. So I'll link that below for you. But I mean, the short answer is yeah, she's completely owner trained. And you know, a lot of our videos on our channel are, are just us going out and training. So, all right, we'll get back to the regular part of the video. <laughs> 
Oh, how long is Fairby's hair? Which I think I kind of already answered that. It's this long. <laughs> I'll, I'll put in a picture of her hair down. And does Fairby know retrieval? As a trick, yes. As a task, no. Um, and the reason I say that, I know it's very similar. It's the same motion. She does a lot of things that are service dog tasks that I don't need for my disability. So I call that a trick instead because if it's not something for me, it's not really a task if that makes sense. So even though she can uh, take my socks off, she can pick up my dropped keys, she can pick up my dropped wallet, she can open a cabinet and shut it back. But none of those are actually tasks that help my disability, so I don't call them a task, I call them tricks. So it's the same thing with retrieval. Like, could she do it? Yes. I feel like I can very easily morph that into go get my medicine or go get, you know, a water bottle for me or something. So I hope that makes sense. All right, guys. So I think that's all the questions. Thank you guys so much for submitting questions. I really enjoy doing these. I hope I answered your question. Um, if you have any more questions, leave them below for me. I'm gonna put this video into a question and answer playlist because I've done a few of these before, so I'll link that up here for you guys. I'll link a subscribe button up here and then I'll link a video just for you right here. And we will see you soon. Bye, guys.